Tin Tin Buffet, yeah. yeah. And it'll Shit. be, that's just it. My name is Connor McGrath. I'm the co-host for this exciting uh, television party, and I'd like to introduce to you uh, my my co-host, my uh, compadre, and my partner in crime, the uh, human exclamation point, Mr. Kurt Baker. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Kurt. Yes, welcome to another episode of That's Just It. I'm so happy that we are able to be here broadcasting to you, the wonderful viewer, and because of that, we have a very, very special guest and an old-time friend, Mr. Jeff Beam. Hey, Jeff. Howdy. How you doing, man? I'm quite well. Oh, it's just great to have you in. I'm, it's I'm just so, so glad. great to be here, You're man. a busy man, but we were able to schedule you in here for a little talk. We did it. Man on the move. He's got a lot of, a lot of projects. A lot of projects. Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we start with uh, what your, your latest thing? Um, you are you've you've got a lot of records out, but you just put out a new one, um, and your uh, album release party was uh, this this Friday or last Friday, I guess, yeah. right? Um, over at the Empire. So um, yeah, this is it. What is it? It's called. It's called uh, Be, Be Your, Your Own, Own Mirror. Mirror. Yeah, let me check this out. I love the album cover. It's very. It's got a great great artwork in there. You know. All kinds of psychedelic it's the kind of shit. Thing you, kind of thing you don't get anymore with MP3s. That's the thing that sort of lost is you miss the artwork and all the cool. Oh yeah, little uh, little flares. I'm not even stoned, and this is tripping me out. <laughs> Holy shit! So yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, about your album. Well, I recorded it over the past year. Um, started recording it when I moved to Brooklyn in January, uh, and then I moved back to Maine after my girlfriend finished college, uh -huh. and I finished the record here after I joined uh, the Milkman's Union. I've been playing oh, bass yeah. with them so. It's been an uh, interesting juggling time with all that, but uh, it took about a year to complete. And uh, even though I have a lot of records before that, this is the first one I want people to hear if they're hearing me for the first time. So you're really psyched about it? Really psyched about it. Oh, that's cool. Well, I can tell you someone that is definitely psyched about <laughs> it, a guy named Sam Feifel. He uh, writes for this uh, magazine, The Phoenix. And uh, there, was a, there was a review in here. And, uh, what? what? What does he say? He goes, uh, he goes you know, he says uh, all kinds of different funny things about uh, how, well, I mean, first off, tell us how it was to uh, record your uh, album in a plastic cup. Uh, it was tough. I, I, people don't give you enough credit for recording in a plastic cup, or a paper cup, or Paper cup, it was. is that what it, yeah. Uh, either, either way, getting it, the whole drum set and the mic inside the cup, very tough. And then you have to achieve the sound you're going for. It's yeah. a lost art, I think. I would, yeah, and like, you know. The acoustics in there can't be very good in a plastic cup. You can, you can maybe, you know, put, like, you can put some ice cubes in there. Or, it changes you know, everything. A you, little Sprite. What could you do? A little Sprite. Uh, if you want that kind of that flange. Fizzy, uh, like fizzy a nice fizzy pop sound. Yeah, yeah. Well, what does he say? Here he goes, uh, he goes, you know, congratulations on your latest achievement, which is a song off of, uh, off of the album, and this is the last. This is the f the last sentence of this review. Which you know, if if you have if you have the time to check it out, it's all. It's probably going to be online. It's yeah. forever. This is really cool. Um, so it goes. Congratulations on your latest achievement. Drives and pulses like Beck covering of Montreal. This is a genuinely original work of art. But, and that's it. But so, Jeff Beam, tell us. But. But what? But what? He's leaving it open for a sequel, obviously, a sequel review of the maybe, album. Maybe that's kind of like, you know, his take. That Maybe he was, like, dropping some psychedelic acid or something to get into the, the groove of the music. I think that's highly unlikely, but an Probably. excellent hypothesis. But. Uh, yeah. But. But. I, but. Think, I think he was saying it was a genuine work of art, but it 
it's not his cup of tea. Uh, I, think, I, see. I think that's I think that's what he's driving at. Who what? has their cell phone? Up? I'm gonna turn off Connor. my cell phone. I'm gonna take this moment to see. Yeah. Okay. Ferguson's calling. Oh, I thought he was in Panama. Yeah, it's supposedly. Uh, good reception. But you definitely tend to go towards the psychedelic side. Um, and I want to know, like, what was the most psychedelic experience you've ever had on stage? On stage? Yeah, like something that just totally melted your brain. Whoa. Well, Where I mean, were you? What What was going through your head? Because I know you've had some. I've, yeah, this Friday yeah. was up there, man. I have to say, uh, my friend Greg uh, Kowalski was projecting live art onto us while we were playing my whole new album. Uh -huh. So. Uh, I, it was kind of, there were colors in your eyes because you're getting the projections and it's real light. Uh, I would say that's the most prominent psychedelic experience I can say right now. Were I, you I, like screwed up on some kind of like mushroom or something? Yeah. You no, all no, magic mushrooms. No, I, was magic not on, mushroom. I was not on any magic mushrooms. I, I tend to stay away from mushrooms, even on pizza and whatnot. I'm not a, I'm not a mushroom guy. Uh, right you're missing out, man. Those are the best mushrooms. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, mushrooms are cool, man. Nice. I, got, I, I mean, I like to look at them. Yeah. yeah, there's very some cool that looking. are dangerous. I I was reading a book about <laughs> mushrooms at the library. Some like can really fuck you up. Like, it's just <laughs> like poisonous mushrooms. Poisonous yeah. mushrooms. You it's don't good to uh, it's good to know your mushrooms. I watched know an unsolved. There's Jeff a great, good to know great your unsolved mushroom. mysteries once about somebody that I ate poisonous mushrooms. I don't know what was unsolved about it. It was a long time ago. Yeah, but that was a very. What's scary the mystery? Show. Is like you you ate you're you an ate idiot. You shouldn't mushroom. eat mushrooms that you pick up in the woods. Dingleberry. Dingleberry. Not dingleberry. Speaking of psychedelics, I got a question for Jeff. Absolutely. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of rock stars out there these days that uh, one, once they strike it big, they release their own line of alcohol. Like Sammy Hagar has his own te tequila, and Kid Rock's got his like badass brew or something. Absolutely. I was just wondering if you if this album takes off and is a big platinum success, or probably in this day and age, like platinum would be like a hundred thousand copies. But yeah, maybe even like four hundred. Four hundred, yeah, four hundred is probably platinum in this day and age. What would you consider releasing uh, your own line of bourbon, Jeff Beam bourbon? Oh, absolutely. I, I think I would have to get a Jim Beam sponsorship. Right. Or else I'm facing quite a Jim, lawsuit. You're right. Yes. Yeah, you couldn't release Jeff Beam bourbon. You'd probably get quite the But, locations. I mean, would you drink it? I would drink a Jeff Beam bourbon. I'm a big bourbon fan. There it uh, is. I mean, since I quit would drinking, you? I, you know. <laughs> so I mean, you wouldn't drink Jeff Beam? No, I would go. If what if you, it was non alcoholic? If bourbon? you put your own Snapple out, I'd drink it. <laughs> okay, now Snapple, we're talking. Snapple. It's made from the freshest stuff on earth. Uh, Jeff Beam the of light. Beam on earth. Peach, peach iced tea. Yeah, peach iced tea. All right, well, you're, you're feeding me some good ideas here, man. I'm, I'm Liking where you're going, maybe we'll, we'll have to. Uh, we'll be have business to talk some business deals. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Keep it low calorie. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, In this right. Day that's and we're age. all watching our weight. It's we're all about calories. Our, we're we're gonna be uh, doing some uh, fitness this summer. Yeah, really? yeah. We're some gonna fitness shows. We're gonna try and find some. Oh yeah, we could. We, we could do that's yeah, a good that's idea. That's a great I mean, idea. this is a nice exchange ah, of ideas. So you're an ideas man. This is a brainstorming session. That's all it says. Hey, you should do some aerobics on the show. Yeah. I'll pull out my uh, I'll pull out my uh, spandex. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Listen my sweatbands. Oh yeah. Do some jazzercise. Ratings. Jazzercise. Bust those ratings up. Ratings, man. yeah. People like people like uh, people spandex. like a little bit of TNA. Oh yeah. You got plenty of it. <laughs> yeah. <I got it>. <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway, okay. Let's move on. Um, now, one of the things that I remember, we so we've been friends for a while, and uh, we we went to a. A really cool laser show. Oh yeah. yeah, maybe that was the most psychedelic. Do you experience think that I've that had. was wicked psychedelic? It was pretty out there. Talk about it. Well, Portland doesn't have much for kind of uh, tourist attractions of the psychedelic nature in right. this town. I'd say they're pretty limited. So when I heard about a laser show at the Planetarium involving the music of the Beatles, great band. I had to I had to call Kurt Baker and say, we have to go to the laser show, and. Uh, for 1989, this laser show was incredible, state of the art. Just, I haven't seen anything like it since, you know, before 1989. Since then, it might be a little dated. I think the laser show technology in Maine has probably only gotten up to about 1989. Mm -hmm. I think we just got it. Yeah, I, I think, think we, we just, just got, got it. Got like, it hopefully too. by in a couple of years, we'll have like 1992s. <laughs> laser technology. We'll don't have some really, we'll have some really bad computer graphics. The funniest part about it, though, I felt, oh, yeah. was that uh, the guy that was running the show, uh, 
well, it had the music of the Beatles, of course. So, um, and you know, early and new. It was we, a good mix. we know we know th those songs. Backwards well. and forwards. And so it's it's in our lives. Yes, right. The music of our lives. We know the, the music mixes. of our we, lives. We know the instruments. We know the licks. Right. And uh, and so what was really weird was we're sitting there and all these lasers were coming out and we're like, oh, this is really cool. But we were noticing that there was like, you know, v portions of songs that were just missing. Missing, not there. Where did they go? And then there were a couple songs that were just Herman's Hermits and then <laughs> yeah, there was that five there was some filler in there. Just <laughs> like, hey, what the? But it turned out that one of the s stereo sides was totally missing. Uh, and it was incredible when it got to the song Revolution. Um, it was only bass and drums, and it was missing the guitar entirely, so it just kind of opened with this, like, kind of Howard Dean, like, ow! Kinda. Yeah, no, it was John Lennon, you know, because in, in the Revolution, he, you know, he's like, ah! But there, it's buried <laughs> under guitars, but when you just, when you just, you know, you take away the guitar, take it totally. away, it's just like, and we're sitting there zoinked out, like going, "What the fuck just happened? That's hilarious!" Wasn't it during school laughing. vacation week too? So it was like you were surrounded by kids. Oh yeah, we were surrounded by yep. kids. Kids and people. Out of your Mom, mind. what's that smell? Yeah. It smells like a skunk in here. <laughs> That's just Kurt Baker, honey. Yeah. This is my deodorant. Just yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Good. Oh, crazy, crazy times. Crazy man. times with lasers, man. I crazy tell you what. times. So, but you, you're you're going on tour now, and you've yeah. been on tour many times before. You're, the, you're no stranger to the road. Um, tell us about that time when you were driving the van and it happened to run out of gas. Well, one time I was driving this van. Yes. <laughs> and then it ran out of gas. Oh so shit! Was, <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was driving from Iowa back to um, uh, LaSalle, Illinois. I was, I was seeing a friend at, at an IHOP after a show, and I, I, I was the only one that, that drove to Iowa. And, I, and there was not much open in, in Davenport, and you know, me being the, the New Englander that I am, I'm like, there'll be a gas station in a couple miles. Like 40 miles later, there's nothing, and uh, it's starting to go down and down, and I have all the gear, the rest of my band's at the hotel, Roy Davis and the Dregs, for the record. And uh, around 2.30, the engine seizes up and I go onto the side of the road and have to call AAA. And I get somebody in Alaska, and they don't know anything about Illinois, where I am. And so around 4.30, this guy, uh, wearing nothing but overalls, like no <laughs> shoes, <laughs> it was awesome. He comes out and he has a little thing of gas. I clearly woke him up and pissed him off. And he gives me about nine miles worth of gas and says there's a gas station about 12 miles away best oh, of luck to you you just missed it yeah. uh, no and then i like went like 30 miles an hour on interstate 85 and uh coasted into a gas station but it wasn't over because i couldn't get the gas door open it was it was broken for some reason so i had to go into the gas station uh ask for a screwdriver to break off the uh, gas door and i got back to the hotel at about 6 a.m and then we left for Nashville at eight. Wow. That, just, that's just almost sounded like the setup for a Children's of the Corn movie. <laughs> yeah. Being in Iowa, you're glad yeah. nobody like went after you with a scythe or it was, something. Yeah, it you was gotta watch creepy. out. It was man. pretty creepy being on the side of the road at like three in the morning and have like one car go by you per like ten minutes and you don't know if they're gonna like stop or like accidentally hit you or Right. You yeah. might yeah, Iowa, you might even run into one of them slipknots, you know. <laughs> the slipknots, yeah. yeah. <laughs> slipknot gang. Yeah, what are they uh the the clown, what do they call them? The I don't know. The clown? There's a clown. Well, there. there's the ICP. Yeah. yeah but do the, they roll the, oh. with Slipknot? Oh, no, I'm they don't sorry. roll with Slipknot. They probably totally don't like each other. Yeah, they're they're, they're fighting for the, the reign of uh, hot topics. I think supremacy. they're from the same it, general area of the country, though. I could be yeah. completely wrong. No, I mean, ICP's from uh, Detroit. I'm a big, I'm, I've been a juggalo since way back. Okay. He's had his past. This is the guy who knows. Yeah, I know all about the juggalos. So Slipknot's a whole different crew. Yeah, Slipknot's a different. Yeah. They're yeah. rivals. Well, that's that's a a big Iowa, Michigan. I had no idea you were a joke. That's quite the guy. Oh yeah, I've been part. a big fan since '98. That's weird. Shit. That's just... <laughs> I don't know, that's a well, did um, you break the uh, event coordinator's heart? Maybe. I mean, it's Maybe a pretty it's small campus, right? Do you do something that you shouldn't have? I mean, because that'll get around. It's like, it does. Yeah, like no, I probably have done something. You know, I probably don't remember there. it. 300 kids, yeah. But I have to say, that was <laughs> one of the best shows we've 
we've done, I think, because it was very, like the people were there it was to very listen. Very intimate, yeah. It was very mean, intimate, very intimate show. And they're very starved for entertainment mm -hmm. as well. So like anything that shows up there mm -hmm. and like is 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 pretty good. We could have we could have had two strings and they yeah, you could have had two strings. You could have just done uh, Biz Marquee covers the whole night. Well, yeah. And but they were they very were nice too, and they invited us to their uh, their like homecoming dance afterwards too. So we went and ate refreshments with them. And oh the oh wow! Did you guys 30. pass around a communal cup? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. like a hippie school, right? It's, yeah. it's very drink from this. It was the longest drive home we ever had. Oh really? Oh man, yeah, they can they can uh, throw down there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they kept being like, you should stay, and we were like, no, we, yeah. we'll never it's, leave if we. Doesn't like stay. everyone wear like robes and stuff? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very school. like a lot of rituals. A lot of weird. I've think, sacrificed a few animals. In I my think time. we're going back. Yeah. Uh, in about three weeks, I think we're going to play their big spring fest there. Oh. We're trying. That's, see, I'm trying to MC that Spring Fest, but nobody has... You can just MC. show up with us, man. Yeah, I'll just show up with you guys and, like, demand be to be like, let on. Here I am. You yeah, I've spent man. so much money going to school. I you spent $40,000 going there, and I, I, they didn't do... That's the least they can give you. Everybody... I visited, like, two months ago, and everybody just kept giving me funny looks. The money that you are, sp are spending to go to school there is going right back into Jeff Into Jeff Beam's wallet, I know. It's they ridiculous. paid us $40,000 <laughs> last time to play, to play there. What the hell, Connor? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. so much for that education. Yeah, we'll have to go to this. We'll have to crash their Spring Fest. We'll Let's do a live do edition from Vermont. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, we can like get like really cool like rat dog bootlegs and strange folk. Like, hey, check it out, check it out, and like then just like, punch them, them or something. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, see, that's what you get. I would give them a purple nurple. <laughs> purple nurple. You got you got a purple nurple of some sort on your forehead, right? Did I get a purple nurple? No, I mean not. Oh, oh, that's a good story. Yeah, if I I'm not I'm not the one being interviewed though. But that's true. Okay. Uh. <laughs> but that was at college. That was at college. Yeah, that was a very funny. You bumped story. into a stripper pole. It's a long, it's an elaborate pole. No, I didn't bump into it. The stripper pole. I was bumped into you. Bumped into it you? bumped into me. I you was sure a stripper didn't hit you with a pole? No, there was a there was a stripper. <laughs> in, there was a stripper pole in the dance studio, and some uh, some dude was uh, swinging off it. And I guess he, it wasn't it wasn't installed very properly. <laughs> they don't. It was like some student set up a stripper pole in the uh, dance studio, and it, it became dis and lot. Dis dislodged and I was just on the bystander and like looking up, wasn't paying attention and it knocked me to the ground. And the guy who the guy who uh, who swung off of it, he he uh, he flew like ten feet and like <laughs> ripped his nutsack and <laughs> <laughs> fucked up his neck. Oh damn! So he got the worst of it. I just got a huge bump, which was really cool and like girls were really concerned and that was they thought the bump was very sexy. Oh. So. Wow. Hey, speaking of violence. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I digress. Remember that uh, that one time when we om like we almost got in a fist fight in Milwaukee. Oh yeah. Over man. a girl that both of us didn't even like. Nope. <laughs> That's how that tour went. Yeah, that was funny, man. That was pretty. I good. was like, Jeff Beam, I am this close to kicking the shit out of you. I was just like, like, I was like, Kurt, let's just shake hands. And then like I remember like having this like flashback of like you running down the street with a big tire. We were like wheeling Oh yeah, tire. we had we had the What were you doing, man? I don't know. I oh. don't know what I was doing. I took our spare tire and took it for a ride without the rest of the van. And that was in a dangerous neighborhood. You could have gotten shot. I could have gotten shot and somebody could have taken the tire and beaten me with it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that tour was a big blur. I'm glad I videotaped all of it. <laughs> yeah, you did videotape I all have of an it, didn't unreleased you? tour documentary. Oh man. There's some stuff on that that's amazing. You may baked never beams, see the later that's day. what it should be called. Baked, baked beams. Baked beams. Yes. Because you guys were probably all baked on that tour. Well. It was, it was, it was about 90 degrees every day, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> they were all stewing in a van, man. Uh, yeah. It was like 90 degrees in Wisconsin. It, was, it never happens. Yeah. Stewing in a van, stewing up everyone, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy. Hey, uh, speaking of stews, tell us about uh, what's it like, you know, living in so many different places but you know you always come back to Portland so what's what 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 draws you back here all the time oh the people are pretty unique here man yeah yeah there's a lot of personality here there's a lot of good people a lot of people doing things for the right reason here from you know from the heart uh, and there's just a good community here it's like a big enough place where it has everything you need but it's not overwhelming there's a lot of nature I think uh, yeah, lots of nature. Winter sucks. Absolutely. It's the worst part, I think. But, um, you know, you can go to, I've been to Brooklyn and I've been to Boston. It's fun. There's a lot going on and it's good to go for a while, but it's great to leave, you know. Mm. It's just too many people, I think. Overpopulation's a big, 
a big thing with me. So oh, yeah. it's kind of cool to come where there's a, uh, a, a, ma a manageable amount of people. You know? Sure, so, sure. But yeah. you are hitting up, hitting the road again. Yeah, I'm going to be in New York City. In <laughs> yeah. So, so what, this is to promote your new record. Yeah. And where are you going? What's what's the plan? Oh uh, well, I did the first show was Friday uh, and here in Portland, and then I'm doing Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, and then I'm doing Burlington, Vermont. I'm doing New York City and Brooklyn, and then I'm doing uh, outside Philly, and then I'm doing Washington D.C., and then uh, I have an off day, and it's my grandfather's 99th birthday. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'm gonna try to see him, and then um, I'm playing Boston. Uh, the light show guy is going to be in Boston, so that'll Sweet. be cool. Sweet. Psychedelic, so buddy. Psychedelic. Psychedelic, And then I'm playing in Orono, and then I'm playing on Local Motives on April 20th here in Portland. Wow. And that oh, wow. should be the end. A lot of exciting stuff. Busy, busy, busy man. Busy, busy man. beam. Busy beam. That's oh, right. That's, oh. that's never happened before. <laughs> All right. Uh, Fortunately, the time's just gone fly. We uh, just we've had come so to the much end of time. Our, our rodeo. Can I can I tell the folks where they can find it? Yes, yes. Here's right. his new album, Be Your Own Mirror. Yes, it, please. Jeff start. Beam. Dot bandcamp dot com. Bandcamp dot com, and you're on Facebook and Twitter and yeah, all, all those all sites. All the internets. You have a MySpace? Uh, I just deleted it two days ago. Oh. It's kind of a hard. It's That's a hard kind of, transition to make. Yeah. You know, it's the passage of time. I don't want to talk about it. Wow. It was a bad breakup, <laughs> I guess. It was. Yeah. It was. All MySpace breakups are. Man, well, this was just great that we were able to get you in before you go on tour and yeah, all that wonderful so stuff. But uh, yeah. This was a fun time. I'm glad. I'm glad he came in. Thank I'm you very glad. Thank you for coming. This is a beautiful setup we all have. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he grew these at his farm. Wow. Yeah, the hey, farm. Good to see you, man. Likewise, man. Well, you, there you, you go. There great. you have it. That's just it. That's just it with Connor and Kurt. Uh, thank you for tuning in for making this possible. Tune in next week where we'll have another fun and exciting Super guest. guest. All right. All right. Good. Good afternoon. Good night. See you guys see later. See you guys later. Stay!